Hey hey, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. In today's video, it's time to take a close look at another game box from my friends from China. The question remains, what are we getting with these things? Because the boxes, they look sometimes pretty damn cool with this logo, I don't know if they ripped it off or something, or if it's something they made custom. Nevertheless, it's absolutely no making any sense when it comes to, let's say, the boxes. Yeah, we have this thing going on with the professional game chip, but besides that, yeah, it's just actually an Android box, because if you're slapping an Android box together with an SD and MUL, like you're having the same thing. Where this item does look pretty damn cool. Uh, yeah, the specification wise, we're also going to talk about it in the end, because there are so many different things. Okay, inside the package, we're just going to get a power supply, HDMI. This is actually the Android box. It's kind of cool to check it out. There's no information about the version in different languages. It seems to be having in-card reader, just actually into the row and the remote of the Android box. I recommend you never use the Android box because these things are absolutely horrible. What they do implement is, hmm, it seems to be some kind of a manual, but there is not even in English. So they even like bother doing this. But let's boot it up and let's see actually what we're getting when it, has, when it comes to the software. Because these things are absolutely one hot mess sometimes. Yeah, they gave me this particular controller and it looks kind of cool. It feels very comfortable. It has no rumble function. In the inside we're finding two AAA battery compartments. But there was one big problem. I have no idea where the dongle is. <laughs> so I'm just grabbing myself an Xbox 360 controller and configure that. Oh boy, and also need a power supply adapter, you know, they didn't include a lot of things. So absolutely one hot mess. Boy, boy, boy. So what about the device itself? So first of all, at the right side, we're finding the first USB port, or only two of them. And yep, this is just a USB 2.0. Next up, we're having different kind of connections. The input for the power supply, that's basically a 5 volt, then HDMI, the RG45, optical out, and the AV out. Then over here, we're finding the USB 3.0, and we're only having two USB ports, more than enough if you just want to play with two players, and then the 128 gigabyte card. And these cards are absolutely horrible. I'm calling them the self cost the self-destructing SD card because they are very low quality and oh man it's in general problem problem nowadays another cool thing it's a very cool gadget that it does have a light up feature when plugging this thing in so the boot up took around like four or five minutes very long but after that we're getting ourselves the absolutely a great looking menu so let's do a quick overview and check out what we're actually getting with this but let's take a close look at the device and what can we actually play with this. So Amialic, the software that's actually running on this, has the option to play all the good stuff from the old Atari days all the way up to PlayStation 1 without any problem whatsoever. But what you need to take consideration is if you're getting into some N64 Play Portable, this is where we're going to be having a lot of struggles. I find it kind of cool that you have, for example, over here the Vertrex. We have this annoying tune, by the way, choosing a different game. Getting into the list is having a very nice preview. And there is all kinds of new stuff on here, including some PC Engine CD-ROM, where there's not a lot of stuff on there. But still, there is a lot of new, let's say, additions to the MLEC software. It's kind of cool, to be honest. And we have so many cool options. And N64 is one of the systems we also deep dive into, but take consideration that will not run perfectly on this. And of course, the same will with the previous boxes. But we do have a little bit more power with, let's say, compared with the older versions. This thing has some very cool things to it. Nevertheless, let's take a close look at the software and just chit chat about what we can do here. Pressing start in the main menu. You're getting the main menu. <laughs> actually so in here we're having the emulic settings here you can see it has been set in 1080p that's actually what my monitor is running on it will automatically start boot at emulation station we can also change out to retro r if you want to i would not like mess around too much with this game settings here we can set up the xps ratio and other things like the banners or the bezels in here we have a user face and the other, other cool things sound settings can be changed and all the other things in combination with the system settings Okay, so another thing I wanted to check out is the information of the device. And this is actually what we're having when it comes to this, the performance or at least like the specifications. It runs on Amiolic 4.6. Here we're seeing the system disk that has been used, how much, and the user disk. 
The temperature around 52 Celsius. The consideration I've been doing, I've been running this thing for quite a long time now. I think I like six hours or so. And yeah, this company is 905H4 Revision. See, that's actually in quad core with a GPU that is an ARAM Gore-Tec or a Mali G31. So this is actually what we're having with the specifications. And the overall, let's say, specification is not bad at all. It's a small, let's say, step up when you're looking at the previous models. But with this system itself hasn't been locked that we have seen with previous models. So if you need to tweak, you can do it over here. In the game list here, we can also do some tweaking and messing around. Pressing the Y, here we're having the extra options. Deleting even a game, removing from favorites, or we can add to favorites, of course, and the advanced games options. With the advanced games options, we can even mess around with the emulator if you have problems and can do tweaking. This is basically for every single emulator if you have problems. Another thing you can also do is mess around with the PlayStation Portable emulator. This is one of those only systems when you're going to be booting up, you're going to have the options to get into a game and will automatically show the emulator. It is something you don't see every single time, but if you need to mess around with it also here in the emulator, you can do that. That's interesting. Let's show you what I mean. But the unfortunate thing is with the emulators, where they have on-screen controls, it's a little bit of an annoying thing that they didn't fix it because it's an easy fix. Pressing select and start will bring you into the emulator so we can mess and tweak here. Game settings. So one of the things you can do is checking the graphics. We will check that out. First, let's fix the on-screen touch controls. Let's shut them down. And let's go back to the game settings, graphical wise. So first of all, frame skipping is set to one, that is correct. So another thing I've also noticed is that some of the things have been set to two times resolution from the emulator. Don't know why they're doing this, but I'm going to set it to one. And now we're going to boot up the game and actually see how it will run. Tekken is not the most demanding game ever, but still it has an overall good performance and I can just really enjoy it. Another thing I also noted with this particular emulator that they didn't have this old one that you see a lot on the Pandora's boxes where we're having a lot of glitches going on. You can all set it to two times resolution. I've been messing with it. And yeah, if you're going to actually do this, you have less performance, but it looks slightly better. That's of course something you need to consider. But I don't want to jump into the PlayStation Portable to begin with because this is one of the most demanding systems out there. And from this point, I'm just going to be honest, it's going to be actually way better. But if you want to get out of the emulator, you need to basically press select and start and twice go to exit. It's not a convenient thing in my opinion, maybe we can tweak it and make it better. But that's one of the things that we need to leave it for now. Alright, so being back in the menu, here we can choose a different system. And let's get into some MAME emulation. Take consideration with MAME. We do have a lot of stuff we can actually play with this, but not calorie synced and the more demanding MAME games. Another system I wanted to check out is of some MAME I already mentioned before. Yeah, it has been set to widescreen shenanigans. So if you want to change it out, we can go to the advanced option I've shown you before, where we can change it out and get some different results. For now, I'm just going to be leaving it on 60 by nine. I know it looks absolutely horrible, but it's one of the ways to actually play. Yeah, for the emulation of MAME, there's no problem whatsoever. These boxes have become so powerful now that we can play all the basic MAME games and just enjoy some wicked things that you can just find on these uh, actually like emulators and boxes. Pressing select and start will give you the same kind of result with the PlayStation Portable Emulator. Only here we're having the retro arc because it's actually running on the back end. And here we can just make a quick load, quick save and mess around with the controls, even make a recording. Would not recommend doing that. And just closing it over here, the content. Here we're having retro arc, quit it over here and we go back. Another system I want to check out is the Descent from PlayStation. The unfortunate thing is that first of all my key mapping is completely messed up or part of it. And another thing I found also a bummer that they completely mess up the soundtrack. So that's something we do see a lot. The reason why, because it saves up a lot of space if you don't implement the soundtracks of the games. But let's be honest, no soundtracks means there is no soul. And this is just not the way how you want to experience this. Absolutely horrible, but when it comes to the overall, overall emulation performance, it's just great, you know. This is a system that runs perfectly. We cannot really upscale it to two times resolution that we can do with mini PCs. 
but I can just really enjoy this man. Next up let's try some PC Engine, what I think is pretty damn cool, there we can switch between what kind of controller you're using, at the left bottom corner you can see it basically switches between the 2 button and the 6 button gamepad. But when you're actually going to be using this 6 button, it's completely like unplayable. And that's maybe because of the game and actually the system, so yeah, if you're going to be doing that it will not work always perfectly. But the overall performance itself is just great, because these 8 and 6 bit systems run just perfectly on this. And that's also one of the reasons I don't want to focus too much on this. Because there is no problem whatsoever, beside this weird glitching going on. <laughs> but let's take a close look at some N64. I already mentioned before is that N64 will be a hit or miss, and that is absolutely the case with this. Where we have an F0X that runs perfectly, or at least per almost perfectly on this, on native resolution. There are some games, the more demanding games, that will not run at all, or not good enough. Think about and cruise in the USA. Well, unfortunately one of my favorite race games but there is so where we're going to need a mini pc and very cheap one that we're going to check out on the channel so consider subscribing hit the little bell because otherwise you're going to be missing it out well let's move into some Game Boy advance i just want to grab one of those many different handhelds on, on there so when emulation performance is pretty good yeah this thing is stretched out to the maximum level and it is not a super great thing to look at i'm using this on a 22 inch monitor Think about if you're using a 55 or something, it's going to be absolutely looking horrible. But the emulation performance itself is pretty damn good in my opinion. So when it comes to let's say also the handhelds, we're not going to have any issues whatsoever here. Nintendo DS is a system that seems to be running quite nice on this. But take consideration, we have different ways to actually play. So pressing the right joystick, here we can switch between the way how you want to display your game. Another thing you can do is actually getting into the left joystick, moving around while we're having a touch screen going on. And there's many of the ways that we can actually play. We can even switch it out with the right trigger. So here we can just do it like this. Let's check out if I can get myself the game running. And this is actually the way you can just get into the quick load, quick save menu and just go out of it by pressing the left joystick and yeah we can even go into the cheating options if you want to there are a lot of cool things you can do with it okay there we go we can actually play the game now let's switch because this is not actually a fun way to play there we go using the d-pad for steering left and right and the overall performance is quite nice when it comes to Nintendo DS But I'm just going to be honest, I cannot really enjoy this. But from the beginning you can already see that it struggles big time with device like a Thomas Wave. It will hit the 60 FPS here and there. There we go, getting in a very crowded area of the game. And I must say that I'm overall quite surprised by the overall performance with this. But let's get into some Sega Saturn, there's one of those newer systems we can actually play on here. Take consideration, it's the same story like N64, plays portable. Some games cannot really be played, think about a Panzer Dragoon, they are running okay or having a lot of slowdowns. But if you're just getting in a basic two-dimensional game, you can just actually see that we do have a decent native resolution, like frame per second, it's absolutely great. So I think it's cool to see that we even have a Sega Saturn nowadays on like cheaper devices like this particular one over here. But I don't want to make it a little bit too easy for this game box. Next up, Sega Dreamcast. That's a system that can be running great on this. But I just want to showcase a game that is really demanding. That is Dead Alive 2. One of my favorite games, by the way. Yeah, I can already see that it is just going to be around 45, 50 frames per second. Not the super slowdowns that we have seen before. With this newer chip, we do have way better performance. Where I can still enjoy it. So basically, we're having the speed of 50 almost. 
So we did see an improvement when it comes to the Sega Dreamcast here. Another system I just wanted to check out is the Sega Naomi. And what I've noticed when you're looking at the, let's say the first generation of game boxes, we had a lot of issues, not only like overall performance, but a lot of glitches. And with the new chips, the new kind of software, it's going to be so much, so much better now. We can actually enjoy some games. You can just see that it does dip to 50 FPS, but I don't find it really noticeable when actually playing on here. But I just want to do one single system and it's one of my favorite ones is Sega Genesis and yeah the reason why I just want to check this out because I love this particular game I've played it so much as a child is that these systems run just perfectly when it comes to the old school 8-bit 16-bit era. If you're only interested in stuff like this you don't need to pick up an expensive book like this because you just don't have the need for it because the power is specially needed when it comes to Sega Saturn, Green Cat and all the other systems. So one of the things I've noticed that there's quite a lot of heat coming out of the system. Not to the point that it's going to be overheating. It's going to still being around like 55, 60 Celsius. And yeah, I'm just, I think it's going to be one of those devices that I would not say disapprove of. But I really want to see active cooling because that saves many of these pieces of hardware. Because the overall quality when it comes to the build quality, it's not let's say the best out there but let's open it up to see if they use any let's say cooling whatsoever let's remove the parkers underneath we needed to remove the rubber feet or the strips all right there we go and the next thing that we need to do is checking out if we can get into the system by using a prior tool because this is not getting anywhere now all right there we go let's open it up and let's see how they made this so first of all we can remove this Oh, we can remove this armament at the same but it doesn't really help doing the overall teardown. Okay, so this is the LED on top. I need to be very gentle. It would not be the first time I'm breaking off cables. Here we're having the antenna. There is a lot of heat coming from this thing. I can just feel it by holding it. That's one of the special features. You can hold your you can just hold it and warm your hands. No, <laughs> just kidding, of course. But here we're having the cooling element i'm just going to be leaving this on i have tried it in the previous models or some time ago i think it was called the m8 pro and i completely ripped the chip from the from the chip from the pcb but so this is actually the thing where we find in here having the ram chips the storage capacity of the android box itself they didn't implement this chip over here wouldn't be honest no idea what it is for but then in here we're having some information 2323 it does indicate that's the S95XX4 version V81. And I think this is the production date of the PCB 2020-08-19. So yeah, so I'm not surprised that they're just doing this. That's actually what they're doing a lot of these days nowadays. Just grabbing an old Android box, grabbing an Z Carbon ME Alec. Just do that and we're having a game box and of course giving me controllers. The controls were not bad at all, but yeah, couldn't really test it out because I couldn't find the freaking receiver. But in the end, when you're looking at this S905 X4 chip in the inside of the machine, it's not bad at all. You have a lot of stuff you can actually play. Some of the system runs even, like, let's say, slightly better than all the previous boxes. But it's not like a new big step up, where this thing looks actually pretty cool. It's kind of cheap, especially when it comes to these self-corrupting SD cards. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell. It would be great to see you in the next video.